This is the unspun cut out and keep guide on how to Brexit. Are you baffled by Brexit? Confused by customs unions? Do you wake up in the middle of the night wondering about articles 1 to 49? <laughs> then this is for you. This week I'm going to show you how to take back control. The phrase take back control was central to the Leave campaign's victory and it refers to sovereignty. And sovereignty makes Parliament the supreme legal authority in the UK, which can create or end any law. Parliamentary sovereignty is the most important part of the UK Constitution. Firstly, we need to determine whether or not we've lost control at all. What proportion of British laws are decided for us by the European Union? According to the House of Commons Library, and this may slightly shock you, there is no totally accurate rational or useful way <laughs> of calculating the percentage of national laws based on or influenced by the EU. In other words, fuck knows. <laughs> <laughs> by definition, any way of calculating the percentage would be inaccurate, irrational and not useful. But when has that ever stopped us? <laughs> the library's best guess is that it could be as low as 15%, or as high as 50%. The Vote Leave campaign said it was 64.7%, which is very precise for a figure they made up. <laughs> Nigel Farage has claimed that it's 75%, although he may have been talking about how much of what Paul Nuttall says is bullshit. <laughs> so the proportion of British laws set by Europe, we can say definitively, is somewhere between 15 and 75%. <laughs> Given that there's no rational way of knowing the amount of laws coming from the EU, the government have come up with a different way of measuring sovereignty in this passage from the Brexit white paper. Whilst Parliament has remained sovereign throughout our membership of the EU, it has not always felt like that. <laughs> it's not always felt like that, which means that Britain just had a funny feeling. We were being ruled from elsewhere. Which, in turn, makes us sound stupid, because people who experience funny feelings tend to be clairvoyants, gambling addicts and the incontinent. <laughs> and I don't know about you, but I've stopped taking advice of all three. <laughs> so, to take back control, we just need to feel like we're in control. And how do you make someone feel in control? You give them a gun. No, no, no. <laughs> no you don't. You don't. You allow them to set the rules. So, what better way to do that than just have a complete clear-out of all EU laws and start afresh? The problem is, that would leave a 15 to 75% hole in our legislation. Scrapping up to 75% of our laws could create, by definition, an almost lawless society. <laughs> so, to get around that, the government will introduce a piece of legislation called the Great Repeal Bill. Yeah, make repeal bills great again. <laughs> the Great Repeal Bill incorporates all of EU law into UK law, which doesn't really make us more sovereign, but it does make us feel more sovereign. <laughs> then we can pick through all these laws at our leisure, changing or getting rid of ones that feel too European, like workers' rights, and keeping all the ones that feel British, like 24-hour drinking. <laughs> <laughs> but picking through the laws could take up a lot of parliamentary time. By our calculations, if each of the EU statutory acts and instruments that pass through the UK Parliament is debated for two weeks, it would take 18,000 weeks or 346 years of parliamentary time. So, the process of taking back control would be completed in about the year 2352. <laughs> where we'll be able to celebrate our sovereignty in style from our UK space pod, populated just before President Trump launched a nuclear attack on the UK for seeing things and a lot of things that were bad things. <laughs> And, of course, in the year 2,352, Labour is still in opposition. <laughs> <laughs> However, you can avoid all of this mess by including something called a Henry VIII clause into the Great Repeal Bill. As you might expect, it's not particularly democratic, as it's named after Britain's most deranged megalomaniac. Sorry, Piers, you're in at number two. <laughs> <laughs> Henry changed the law in 1539 to allow him to govern with proclamation which is fancy legalese for do whatever the flip he likes. <laughs> a Henry VIII clause allows the government to save time. It means they can make any changes to a bill in future without having it be scrutinised by Parliament. Or, in other words, do whatever the flip they like. 
So it's all very straightforward. To regain our parliamentary sovereignty, we just need to remove the most important part of the UK Constitution, parliamentary sovereignty. <laughs> to take back control, all we need is the government to behave more like Henry VIII. Say what you like about beheading your wife, it definitely makes you feel sovereign. <laughs> and that is how you take back control. <laughs>